Hello, this is Wesley from Rock and Roll Vintage and Synth City in Chicago, Illinois. We are very blessed today to have a brand new Mini Moog Model D from Moog Music Incorporated. Um, it is exactly like the original with a few modifications that really add a lot to the sound possibilities of an already very deep synthesizer. So what we'll do is we'll look at those really quickly and then I'll put some sound examples together that will demonstrate some more unusual things you can do with a Model D. So sit tight and let's make some noise. So responding to several years of DIY modification, when Moog decided to reissue this synthesizer, they added some of those typical alterations into their design, namely right here, an additional LFO. Traditionally, with a Model D, you had to use your oscillator number three as your modulation source. Um, in this case, you are freed up to make a three oscillator sound, or alternately, you can have two different LFOs working towards the modulation of the filter or the first oscillator. Additionally, some more modulation routing was added in the controller panel here. You're able to select from four different modulation sources, of which two can be used at a time, and then you have a bipolar mixer here to crossfade between the two different sources. You get an option between oscillator three, your filter envelope, and then on this side, the noise source, and your LFO located right here with two switches to choose between. The combination of the oscillator three and the LFO here um, yields some pretty wonderfully wild results in terms of frequency modulation. Um, additionally, the LFO has two positions. In the down position, it's a triangle wave. Pull the knob up, and you've got a square wave. Moog made one final modification, which is right there on the panel in front of you. Um, if you can't see it, it's because it's not plain and not obvious, but a very common thing that mini Moog users would do over the years is they would take one of the two outputs um, and plug it back into the external input. Uh, this would allow for a feedback loop, overdriven textures, uh, all kinds of grit and growl. Now what Moog has done is they've just normaled that connection to this switch, such that it'll just automatically start feeding it back through the system with the external input volume potentiometer controlling the amount of that. So the first patch we're going to listen to is going to utilize that as well as some relatively complex modulation, mixing the LFO and the oscillator three together. It'll be a very simple lead kind of sound, and then we'll switch on some of that feedback. <laughs> sure the association most people have with the Model D is a big, fat, farty, funky bass. I assure you, as a synthesis, that there's a lot going on, especially with the addition of a new LFO to the Mini Moog's sound design interface. I'm going to do some FM modulation. We're going to use no oscillators on this as audio sources. Uh, we're going to oscillate the filter, and then we're going to send oscillator three and the LFO at it running in various audio rates. And we'll just kind of uh, listen to the sort of wild variety of sounds you can make with the Mini Moog um, without even having to think about something melodic, let alone musical, quote unquote.
So for a final patch for this video sound demonstration on the lovely new Moog Model D, I put together a chords patch using all three oscillators tuned to different intervals. I've got a mixture of modulation coming from oscillator 3 at audio rate, as well as the LFO, moving real slow. I'm going to dance around, play a few chords, as it were, and then I'll throw some of that external input chaos into the mix. You've been watching Wesley from Rock and Roll Vintage in Synth City, and thanks very much.